What is this? Am I dead? Is this the afterlife? Or are you some sort of narcissistic Virgil leading me to judgment? <laughs> yes, Paul. You've been wrong about everything. There is a god, and she's very, very mad at you right now. I totally had you for a second there. You can't deny it. <laughs> you should have seen your face. I mean, our face. Whew. That was classic. Welcome. My name is Lady Trexpert, and this is my celebration of Terran Imperial Might in Star Trek Discovery Episode 12, Vaulting Ambition. If you don't already know this contains spoilers, you are a fool. Michael Burnham obeys her emperor's command to bring the traitor Gabriel Lorca to the palace. At his request, she has synthesized an anesthetic to help Lorca withstand the agonizer and admits that she is afraid to meet the mirror version of her beloved captain. Haven't you ever been afraid of a ghost? They are both weak. The palace is a grand and beautiful ship that puts discovery to shame. The lords of the Terran Empire are gathered in the throne room, where they present their emperor in a manner worthy of her glory. Only a traitor would believe she stands there helplessly waiting for her platform to turn. True believers know she can be men just before the audience begins. Her names evoke the power of another human empire, Rome. Augustus was the emperor who followed Julius Caesar. Chiron, the name of the emperor's ship, was the boatman who ferried dead souls to the Roman underworld. The use of Latin throughout the season demonstrates the roots of the Emperor's ancient power and the erudition of the show's writers. Mercifully for Burnham, the Emperor is glad to have her back. Everything will be the way it was, dear daughter. They begin a meal together, and Burnham learns that the Kelpian she chose in the throne room is now her soup. This is a disgusting turn of events, one that adds a necessary dose of harsh reality sadly lacking in the Federation. Burnham fancies herself a brilliant strategist, but she has no idea that Emperor Giorgio has already suspected her of treason. A fatal miscalculation. And yet, Burnham continues to weave her stratagems. She might want to believe that her Starfleet sensibilities guide her, or that her Vulcan logic has led her to a rational conclusion, but in reality, the Emperor has left her no choice. Like a weakling, Burnham reveals her true mission. I am Michael Burnham, but I am not your Michael Burnham. I'm from another universe. The Emperor is wise to believe Burnham immediately, after verifying an anomaly in the quantum signature. But of course, she already knows about the United Federation of Planets, and about the Defiant. The Emperor uses this information to lay a trap into which Burnham falls. She will trade her freedom for Discovery's spore drive schematics. But of course, the Emperor must already know about this technology. Mirror Stamets has done his own work with spores on board the Chiron, and has noticed damage to the mycelial network. Yet the Emperor conceals this fact and has Burnham call the Discovery to her. Emperor Giorgio then offers more information about Burnham's background with Lorca, using the truth as a weapon to confuse her. In Lorca, you saw a father. Until you grew up, and it became more. Slowly, Burnham realizes that her beloved Captain Lorca has always been from the Terran Imperial Universe. This is the same Lorca that rebelled against the Empire, and now he is once again at the Emperor's mercy. All hail the Emperor. All hail the Empire. Excuse me, what's going on here? <clears throat> uh, nothing. I, I was just starting the review. Did you... did you just hail the Empire? <laughs> no. Okay, yes. I wanted to see what it would feel like. Let me take it from here, okay? All right, fine. So, about Lorca. He is from the Terran Imperial Universe. Called it. But he's not at the Emperor's mercy. He's just managed to break out of the Agonizer, thanks, no doubt, to that anesthetic Michael synthesized and his captor's overactive cruelty. Meanwhile, back on Discovery, Ashvok has been fighting himself. Saru tries to get Laurel to help, but she refuses at first. If he suffers for that choice, so be it. He accepted that suffering in order to best the enemy. That is what it means to be a soldier. That Laurel is crafty. <clears throat> okay, I'm going now. And take off that goatee. Fine. So eventually Laurel does agree to help. 
and she settles the fighting parts of Ashfok's consciousness using finger lasers. But in the end, Ashfok decides to remain human. That's ironic. Or are their personalities somehow combined into a new person? Stamets meets Mirror Stamets in the Mycelial Network and learns that the network is corrupted. He gets some good advice from the Mycelial ghost, Hugh, and realizes all he has to do is wake up. Stamets returns to his body, releasing Mirror Stamets back into his body as well. We find out that the corruption in the Mycelial Network has already spread to the forest on Discovery. So what are we to make of all of this? And what do the revelations tell us about what to expect for the final three episodes of Discovery? Let's start with the small stuff. In Vaulting Ambition, we get references to how long the Mirror Universe has been the way it is. Equality, freedom, cooperation, cornerstones for successful cultures, delusions that Terrence shed millennia ago, destructive ideals that fuel rebellions, and I will not let you infect us again. This suggests that the Terran Empire is quite old, possibly an offshoot of the Roman Empire. Indeed, some Terran imperial decor seems to intentionally echo a glorified Roman past. Fate and destiny are also concepts very important to ancient Rome and Latin literature. Lorca, as an example, seems committed to the idea of destiny. Amazing, isn't it? Different universe, somehow the same people, had a way to find each other. The strongest argument I've ever seen for the existence of destiny. For him and for the writers, this translates into the insistence that affections can cross universes. In the Terran Imperial Universe, Burnham and Giorgio maintain their mother-daughter bond. Saru and Burnham find each other, and Saru continues to protect and serve her. Burnham and Lorca have a weird bond no matter where they are. If you find this kind of speculation intriguing, then you should certainly take a look at a Mirror Universe Divergence Theory over at the Daystrom Institute subreddit. It's a theory that involves none other than Flint from the original series. Are you a student of history, sir? I am. Link in the subspace below. Shades of ancient Rome color other areas of discovery. The way the mycelial ghost of Dr. Hugh guides Stamets through the mycelial recreation of discovery is totally in line with Aeneas' journey to the underworld. In the Aeneid, written by the poet Virgil starting in 29 BCE, Aeneas goes to the underworld to get advice from his father on how to fulfill his destiny. Additionally, Prime Universe Stamets asks Mirror Universe Stamets if he's a narcissistic Virgil meant to lead him. In the 14th century Italian work Inferno by Dante, a fictionalized version of Roman Virgil guided Dante on his journey through hell. The Roman connections are intentional. They are at least a callback to the days of ancient epic poetry. This leads us to the mycelial network. The Stamitzes are connected to each other. It doesn't seem that this is an accident. All things being equal, both the Prime Universe and the Terran Imperial Universe are researching the mycelial network separately, but just the same. Except, unlike the Prime Universe Stamets, the Imperial Universe Stamets never figured out how to travel between universes. That's why he needs the Prime Stamets to break them both out of mycelial purgatory. Or does he? Let's theorize for a moment here. What if Mirror Stamets is collaborating with Mirror Lorca? What if this Stamets is the one who sent Lorca into the Prime Universe to begin with, as part of the plot to overthrow the Emperor, or hide Lorca from authorities? Or, taking another angle, what if Mirror Stamets is luring Prime Universe Stamets into a trap of some kind on behalf of the Emperor? The connection between these two universes, in light of the USS Defiant's role in this story, is not an accident. And Mirror Stamets? He's up to something. He is implicated by Dr. Kolber's mycelial ghost as the cause of the mycelial network's decline. Stamets knows more than he is letting on. But can the Great Mushroom Highway be fixed, or is it fated to be destroyed somehow? Now would be a good time for the return of Ensign Waterbear. As expected, Ash Fox's existence wasn't the big plot twist we all thought it might be. The clues were too many for it to be a completely surprising reveal. However, the real question is, what happens to Ash Fox now? It seems we are getting part of the answer. Lorel assists in a little neural surgery supposedly fixing the problem. 
But does this neural surgery kill off Vok and leave Ash Tyler? Or does it merge the both of them into a new entity? Wait, this is better. How about Tuvix? Tuvix it is. If that's so, then now the biggest question is, how does the new Ash Vok plug in to the rest of the story? Perhaps this new entity, a Starfleet officer who is also kind of a Klingon, might somehow be an ingredient to ending the Klingon war over in the Prime Universe. Maybe the new Ash Vok will be allowed to continue being a Starfleet officer. It wouldn't be the first time a resurrected character continued their career. Now let's take a look at the Emperor, Lorca, and Michael Burnham. It is heavily insinuated that Mira Lorca, i.e. the Lorca we've been following, and the Mirror Universe Michael Burnham were romantically involved and in both acting against the Emperor. There were a couple of clues, perhaps. Lorca is the Mirror Universe version of himself, and he knows that Prime Universe Burnham isn't his Burnham. Nevertheless, Lorca did show some jealousy of the growing romance between Ash Tyler and Michael Burnham. Once he realized that Burnham and Tyler were a thing, he went right up to Burnham on the bridge and demanded loyalty. Can I count on you, Burnham? Yes, sir. When it was revealed that Tyler was, in fact, a Klingon, Lorca's offer of sympathy was begrudging at best. Look, I know this is hard for you. I know you'd come to care for Tyler. Why would the show bring this up unless it has implications for what we might see in the future? Imperial Universe Lorca and Prime Universe Burnham aren't going to suddenly begin a romantic relationship. Instead, this might be a complication involving the yet unseen Prime Universe Lorca and the Terran Imperial Universe version of Michael Burnham. So the question is, are those counterparts really dead? Or will we see them yet? And the Emperor? A character involved in not one but two instances of phagosophaloism? What is her goal here? Is she working closely with Imperial Universe Stamets to lay a trap for the Prime Universe Stamets? Maybe her aim is to lure another Prime Universe ship over to the Terran Imperial Universe. Perhaps another grab bag of Prime Universe technology could inject new blood into the Terran Empire, who is dealing with a sizable rebellion at the moment. Michael Burnham makes a deal with the Emperor to allow the USS Discovery to go back to their native universe in exchange for data and schematics of the Prime Universe Spore Drive. But giving Emperor Giorgio access to Spore Drive technology would be a mistake, right? Why would she not attempt to conquer the Prime Universe as well? And is she actually lying about the Lorca Burnham romance collaboration? These are questions that might be answered sooner as opposed to later. Other questions loom in the viewer's mind. Now that the seeds of the Spore Drive's demise are firmly planted, where is the ISS Discovery? Seriously, what is Captain Killy up to? And will we see any more Imperial Universe versions of Prime Universe characters? Laurel? Ash Tyler? Maybe we might even bump into the Prime Universe version of Landry. Maybe she could explain how Lorca ended up in the Prime Universe. That's it for our review. Thank you for watching. If you like this and other Trexpertise videos, then consider supporting the channel. Patreon is the best way for you to help create more Trexpertise. However, you can also support the channel over at our Trexpertise store. The choice is yours. You can find the relevant links in the subspace below. All hail the Empire. We'll see you next week. Toy Show, Ryo. Kangai de Mioyo.